Hello, it's Nick, and today I will show you how to create clickable wireframes in Figma. Wireframes are low fidelity visualization of a future interface created using simple objects. To make a task a bit more specific, I will create wireframes of a mobile screens, and I will use Instagram as an example. Here I show you two screens that I will recreate. And the first thing they need to do is to define UI elements. I will use the elements like a circle, rectangle, crossed rectangle, and lines. And let's do it. Uh, rectangle is a very basic object that can be used to represent content group or functional elements like uh, buttons, for example. The next one will be rectangle with a crossed line. And let's make it perfect uh, rectangle. Uh, the cross line are uh, used to represent the imagery and it's commonly used, this object is commonly used uh, for things like images, visuals, video and other media stuff. Next we will create a perfect circle. Let's create ellipse and set 200 pixels to 200 pixels. Circles are typically used to represent objects like an icons or functional elements like an avatar, for example. And the last one is a combination of lines. And this object is used as a text plex placeholder. So these four elements are foundational elements for wireframing. Now what we need to do is we need to create a layout for our design. And I will recommend you, when you create a mobile screens, I recommend you to use the size of an actual viewport you design for. For example, if you, use, if you design for the iPhone, you need to use the size of a viewport for iPhone 12. For example, it will be like 390 to 844 pixels. and the rounding will be 40. Perfect. Let's make it wide and let's create a frame. Let's call it home screen. So we are ready to create, to recreate our objects. And I know that usually we'll follow a different approach like create the design and then it turned the low fidelity design to the high fidelity. But for my example, for my own case, I will use it just to show how how we can do it, I mean, how we can create objects. And the third thing we need to do is to add uh, things like avatars at the top of part of the screen. So I will select the frame and I will copy the object here. So you will see it will belongs to the frame now. And I will use scale to scale it down to the small objects. So it's kind of like this. And I will simply duplicate these elements. I don't want to create a perfect copy of the design. It's just to give you a general idea of how it works. Then I need to add the logo. And when it comes to things like text text elements, we can use either the elements like lines. But in my case, I will use uh, the actual text for some elements like uh, labels for call to action buttons or log logo here because it gives the uh, general idea of what the screen is all about. Uh, Instagram. Okay. Again, make sure that it belongs to the frame. This is really important. Next thing we need to do is we can uh, select elements like a three uh, ellipses, copy them, and uh, we again scale them down to create a collection of clickable elements that will belong to the top corner of the screen. Alrighty. Next one, we need to create a avatar of our user. Again, let's scale it. And uh, let's make it a text, like um, just to give the someone who will review the screens an idea of what this object is all about, a user. All right, next one, we will need to duplicate the image. In our case, it will be either visual, static visual, or uh, dynamic like a video. All right. And then the last thing is that we need to add the few elements. We can copy and paste them here. 
like a button, like, subscribe uh, and share. And then the information about the likes. Let's uh, move it a little bit up, up. Okay. And the reason why I actually use the actual canvas, I mean, the view, the size of the viewport is that because it allows me to my, maintain the balance and the size of the elements, make it more realistic. It's not always important, but in our case, it will be really important because I will show the design to you later. Likes. All right. Let's select it and move it a little bit to the top of the screen. All right. The final thing is that we need to add top bottom elements to the bottom navigation objects to the bottom top bar. Okay, let's move it here. And let's actually put the likes a little bit above here and the functional controls here. Uh, the last thing is that we need to ensure that these are perfectly aligned. Let's distribute horizontally. All right. This will give us a general idea of what this design is all about. And then we need to recreate another screen, the screen for the user profile. And the great thing is that we can use some parts of that design in a new design. So let's call this element back. Um, remove this one unnecessary thing. This will be user name. These stay untouched and uh, this will be posts, followers and following. All right. Let's um, minimize the size of the font face and actually this feels kind of fine, I think. Not great, but, but it's okay. And the last thing is that we need to add the functional buttons here. Let's use our control here. Let's put it here. And when we add functional elements like a buttons, we can play with the size and also add um, contrasting elements. Like for example, we might want to give it more attention. And in that case, we just use the color of the button here to make it colorful. So the, anyone who will review this design will understand that this is important element. Okay, the last thing is that we need to change the, create the collection of the images here. Let's do it. And again, we don't need to be really focused on creating exact design, we create an exact design because the idea of wireframe is that to give you a general idea of what the screen will be all about. So it's kind of fine when the, um, the size of the elements is not exact. And uh, that's actually all. Let's ensure that we don't have a floating elements anywhere. And it looks like we don't have any floating elements. Uh, all elements belong to the frames. And the last thing we need to create, connect these frames together. And for, to do that, we will go to the prototype and we will choose the objects that will act as a interactive element for our design and simply create a transition between screen. So that once the user will click the object, they will navigate from the home screen to the screen called profile name actually yeah let's ensure that we will have a proper transition it will be smart animate easy now yeah let's leave it easy now it's not perfect transition for the navigation experience but it's kind of fine i think let's see what we will get let's uh, fit to screen and then once we click the user, we will navigate to the screen that will show the user profile. And to make the transition even better, we can actually 
add transition to the back button. So once the user will click the back button, they can navigate back to the home screen. Let's see how it works. Okay. And once I click the back button, I will go back to the original screen. So yeah, that is a general idea of how we can create the wireframes in Figma in no time. Thank you.